Welcome to How to Build a Tent. Let me tell you, it is really hard to build a fire. We have a fire pit in our backyard and we had all the people over and we were like, hey, let's start a fire. And it took a long time. And I have to admit, I'm not a Boy Scout. I don't know what I'm doing. But it took a really long time. So if you are not a fire starter like myself, and you have a bunch of people over, you may want to figure out and at least have some lighter fluid. We did not use lighter fu- fluid. Like, we were old school. It was really cool. My name is Matt Williams. Again, thank you for uh, watching the show. This is How to Build a Tent. Thank you for sharing the show, tagging a friend, sharing it on social media. If you're listening there, really appreciate it. I also really appreciate you subscribing to our network. The show is part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast network. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com. Put in an HDBT in the memo field. You'll get a great mug just like this one. 15 ounces of deliciousness plus you'll be supporting us as we proclaim the lordship of jesus in every area of life and you'll get tons of great content as well if you have any questions comments you can reach out to me matt at how to build tent.com you can find me on all the social media sites really pre- appreciate the support you can find me how to build a tent if you can find me you can there's a link below on youtube i'd really pre- appreciate a subscribe there i would love for a christmas present to get to 100 subscribers so i can edit the link and it could be more discoverable by people and not just looking for tent building or fire starters which you should not look to me to tell you how to start a fire today we're going to go through a video of the ceo we're going to basically quote unquote interview the toys r us ceo and talk about is it actually true true toy i think is what it's called but he is over Toys R Us. They're back after being bankrupt in 2017. So we're going to go through that. We're going to talk about the different things they're doing, what the CEO understands. You're going to notice that he talks about the experience a lot. And so you can see how important that is to him and his strategy and what they're trying to accomplish, how they're trying to compete. If you remember, one of the reasons they did go bankrupt is they got taken over by a venture capitalist firm, Bain Capital. And they took on a lot and a lot of debt. And so now they've restructured, they have a new business model. And they even talk about a little bit of how their customer has changed in their new strategy. It's really interesting. Whenever you can get a clip and listen to a CEO and how they think of a big company, you should listen because there's they think differently a lot of times. They have a lot of great insight and you can just kind of learn and glean from them. So we're gonna do that now. Now, this is going to be broken up into clips, and we're going to talk about it, comment on it, and then, um, and then, yeah, then we'll call it a day. Let's see if I can get back to the beginning. The original thing was selling the story that they're going to come back, right? And uh, that this is going to be new and different because immediately people think that you're just going to do the same thing, big 25,000 square foot stores, same formula. So convincing folks that there's a different model here, that was, that's, a, that's what they were able to do from the start, but now they will be ready for the new model. The first thing you'll notice that he talks about a story to tell. We have a story to tell. We're coming back. And they talked about how he's going to do, they're doing that in phases with the announcement with Target. They're partnering with Target to do online logistics. And then also he's talking about rolling out stores in segments and how they're going to start in they're starting in New Jersey and they're going to other these big malls and they're going to be talking about all these different um, you know strategies and that they're having how they're implementing these new things it's part of a story he's going to tell and if you remember we talk about this a lot and it's important to remember the different languages and how different roles discuss things if you're a consultant your language is answers if you're a manager your language is data if you're a leader you're language is storytelling and so ceos talk a lot about knowing your story and how does it fit with your story it's really important i was i forgot what it was it was some brand i might have been talking to my wife about it and he and i'm sorry and my wife was talking about a man who it was just weird and it didn't fit the brand in the commercial it that's what it was it was a commercial for a book a patterson i think his name is on fox and we were watching, and he's like, and my wife turned to me and she said, I don't know what it is, but watching this commercial makes me want to read his mystery novels less. And what it was, was he was not fitting the story. He was not fitting his brand by being on TV and selling his books like that. There is a certain image that you have, especially in books, where you don't see the author. You basically are making up the character a lot of, in a lot of ways in your head. And it just didn't fit. 
And because it didn't fit, it didn't work. And my wife, and I'm sure others too, did not want to buy books more and more because the story didn't fit. It's important. People want to have a story that plays, that works together. I think that's just kind of how God created us. Another thing he talks about is the brand. And we're seeing this. And he was talking about the struggle of teaching people teaching people about the brand and how to reimagine what Toys R Us is going to be. And the question is, well, why even deal with it? Why don't you just start a new brand? Why use this old brand that went bankrupt? Because brands are immensely important. They are incredibly important. And if you, I mean, if you, you do have a brand yourself and it's just as important as a company brand and how you interact and how people are gonna think of you for that next promotion, how people are gonna think of you when they wanna hire you as a vendor. These are all very important things and Toys R Us CEO, the CEO knows it. And so that's why it's worth fighting the fight of or reinventing themselves to people. And the second thing that really struck for me from this clip was how he understands how people think of him. Like it takes time, it takes work, it takes money to do the research, to engage with your customers, to engage with your target demographic, to find out what they're really thinking. He's just not making this up, but he spent a lot of time figuring it out with experience, working with firms to look at the data, and he knows where the customer is at. That is so important. You have to know your customer and their needs because you have to figure out how to convey that story of value that you are selling to them so that they sell it. They, so they buy it because you may deliver value, but if they don't know it and they don't understand it, they're not going to buy your product. They're not going to just trust you that you're going to give them value, but they have to understand it and see it and want to buy into it and own it. And Toys R Us is definitely that brand. So that's why they're not just starting over with a new store, but they're actually taking it, revitalizing it and reusing it again. Isn't it really interesting that he says it's about the kids and how they engage with the brands, but I think it's no different with adults. So what they're doing is it's not just rows and aisles and of store of toys being, you know, put on the shelves, but their areas, just like kind of Best Buy. I think they kind of took the idea from Best Buy and how there's different brands and locations. And it looks like they're using this model instead of just rows and rows of toys. And it's because kids identify with brands and just think about that's why Disney is so valuable is they don't just have movies, but they make brands with their movies. Think of Frozen. It's not just a movie. It's the toys. It's the characters. It's the kids hire them for Christmas or for their birthday parties to come and be the character. Like they're creating numerous brands and Toys R Us is starting to get that with their new redesign. This is really interesting to me because they're using data to design their stores. And when we think about data, we don't really think of it in a way of how, how do we design our stores? How do we design the layout of our products? But it is immensely important. And data is just basically a different form of math. It's a different face to math. And we know that math is in anything. Math is in everything. Math is in music. Math is in your buildings. Math is in our computers. It's all around us. And so is data. And because it is this type of math. And so we need to realize that. And the more that you can leverage data and facts and figures, the facts and figures, I guess is the way to say it, the more you're going to have great and smart decisions because you're making informed decisions. You're not just guessing. You're not just going with your gut. Not that that's wrong all the time. But 
the more that you can use data to make data-driven decisions, the better off you're going to be. And that's also the better off you're going to be convincing your boss and your manager, the better you're going to look if you can come with data to things. And so that's what they're doing with this store. They're using brands. They're using data analytics companies to help them drive them and to learn. They're not just saying, okay, this is it. This is how it's all going to be. They're taking these test stores and slowly rolling them out and looking at the data, looking where people are visiting, looking at what products are being sold. And they're making decisions and making adjustments to their store, to their products and where they're laid out. And just think about how you can do that and how you can learn, how can you, you can tinker, how can you can do A, B testing? How can you do these different tests to see how you can improve using data? You might be surprised with how more efficient you can become and how you can boost your sales, how you can cut costs and all those things. All of those things are possible when you're using data to make data-driven decisions. When we get back, we're going to talk about where the CEO sees our economy, where we're at this quarter, and maybe give us some insights on some companies to invest in. But we need to talk about our great sponsor, Skillshare. This is our first paying customer or paying advertiser. And so I would really appreciate you guys checking them out, giving them support. You can go to Skillshare.com slash HDBT, get two months free of their product. And what is their product? What are they selling you? They're selling you on-demand courses to improve yourself to fuel to fuel your imagination to expand your value that you can bring to people it's an online learning community for the creator and all of us they have thousands of classes graphic design creative writing animation music production film and video i need to start watching those to better my podcast and they have storytelling we talked about that before how to tell a good story how to tell a compelling story entrepreneurship for you looking to branch out and to start a side hustle they have classes on demand where you can come together and learn with a community and they have specific classes for anything you want. So go over to skillshare.com HTBT, join the millions already studying skillshare.com slash HTBT. You get two months for free. Just try it out. You get two whole months for free. It's coming up to the new year. Why don't you build and improve on the skills that you already have and look for new ways to leverage, to get that promotion, to start that new company whatever it is, skillshare.com slash HTBT. All right, let's get back to Toys R Us and let's see what he has to say about the economy. I think the consumer is really, really strong in this final quarter season. Um, there's a lot to be excited about. I think the toy category overall, there's a lot of great brands that are doing very well. But historically, the toy category has been somewhat recession proof. So even in tough times, um, the toy category tends to do very well. But this year, the consumer has got plenty of money in their pocket. So you might be saying, well, he didn't really talk about the economy and where we're at. He talked about the consumer. Well, we are a consuming economy. So a lot of times when CEOs of toy stores or other industries talk about, this could be like real estate, talk about the economy, they look at the consumer because it's consumer driven. And if they're confident in the economy, if they have good high paying jobs, if they have money to spend, like he talked about his disposable income, that they have a lot of money to spend this holiday season. They feel that they're all going to be in really good shape. And he's talking about how it's, this quarter is going to be great for Toys R Us. They're starting in a good place where customers are going to have the resources to buy these toys. And you have to remember, demand is the willingness and the ability to buy. And so when you have disposable income, that's the ability to buy. And secondly, he talked about it being a recession-proof industry. The toy store toys are a recession-proof industry, which... I didn't really realize that before, which is good to know for us as investors, where we are looking for places to put our money. We don't always want to necessarily just pull our money out, but we want to find recession proof industries to put our money in because that's how we make money in a bad economy. So we have a court fourth quarter that's doing well, not just talking about toys, Toys R Us, but Target. Target is leveraging Toys R Us. They have their own toys, Walmart, all these companies that are selling toys. Just think about it. Hasbro, Disney, they might be a some investment opportunities this quarter when they report the following quarter on their previous quarter to see how they did maybe drew, drove up some revenue might be just a great opportunity and then also when we feel a recession is coming to be having stock in there it's not something that we can have to be scared of we can leverage we can mitigate our risk by investing where we're going to have a good quarter and if we start having a recession start having a slowdown we still have stock in those companies as well Uh, partnership with Target, different 
for uh, e-commerce sales, which always makes that um, our trade with the furniture uh, experiences. But it was really, really important that physical points were back on the map that the customer could engage with. And it's I think it's really good for us as well. So come. So we're hearing again experience engagement as they are slowly rolling out we've talked about the pilots and how companies do things big companies do things in phases to make sure it's working and how they they can't just do a large scale rollout that they have to start with pilots and that's usually a safe way to do it but he's talking about engagement he's talking about their experience that's the theme that they are working on here at toys r us So interesting, Toys R Us was a B2C before where they were a business selling to consumers, us, the toy store. And in a way, they still are that, but they're seeing themselves differently, which is fascinating. They see themselves as a retail as a service, he said. Retail as a service. And what he is, he's facilitating the sales of these brands. And they're looking to the brands as their customer more than the consumer. Very interesting. I wonder like, if they're renting out space in the stores, if they are, you know, doing consignment. It'll be it would be interesting to find more about that out. But that the, throughout the whole interview, he's talking about experiences. He's talking about the consumer, and, and now he's talking about how he is using it as a service to deliver these toys and bring it to life, where you can use them, you can interact with them. He talks about having a theater and all these things, and he's showing off the toys to the consumer, but his customer is really the brands. Absolutely fascinating. If you live in New Jersey, I think there's some in Texas. I, I'm not sure where the other ones are, but go into it. Go look at the store and see what you think and compare it to the old store and just realize that there's reasons for the redesign. There's a story they're trying to tell. There's a narrative. They're having a new mo business model. They have a new customer. They're using data-driven decisions. And just compare and see. There are a million different reasons why these stores look different and it's just absolutely fascinating it's almost worth taking a trip up to new jersey just to see the store so there you go go check it out if you can might be a great opportunity to knock some christmas um christmas shopping off the list and learn a thing or two about the store and just the strategy of toys r us we'll talk to you next time go.